Ah, joining me is Connor Bamford, a virologist from Queen's University in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Thank you so much for your time. As this pandemic spreads, what are the latest developments in regards to what we know about this coronavirus? So I think in the last four months, we've been able to find out an awful lot about this virus and namely, you know, how it's spreading and just how fast it can actually spread and how devastating that spread can be. And um, that's on a public health side, but maybe on a scientific side, we're learning more about, you know, the fact that people might be spreading the virus when they're not um, showing maybe a lot of symptoms and how fast this virus can spread and maybe identifying new treatments and vaccines. Are you getting any sense about whether it's starting to mutate? So viruses are mutating all the time. In fact, that's how we are able to track the virus. So these genetic differences in the coronavirus allow us to find out whether viruses um, in the United States are, are related to viruses um, in Europe. Um, but the question is, um, do these things actually impact anything in a person? Are they making the virus more dangerous uh, or more transmissible? And so far, there is no evidence that while there are changes occurring, that these are actually having an influence on the infection. Now, at the beginning of this uh, epidemic, there was a lot of discussion about who was most at risk in terms of uh, having a severe outcome, and they included the elderly, people with pre-existing conditions. Another interesting element is more and more men are more likely to die than women. Are there any other significant factors that are starting to emerge as to who is the most vulnerable? Um, so, so you're right, there are, you know, there are people who are more at risk and while anybody can get infected and anybody can get sick and unfortunately anybody in any age class or how healthy you appear to be um, can unfortunately die, your, your risk of dying or getting really sick um, is really influenced by um, perhaps your sex, your age um, and these underlying conditions. Um, one of the interesting developments is actually in looking at why do seemingly healthy people um, succumb to this virus infection? Um, is there other genetic reasons, um, environmental reasons? And I think this will be one of the interesting things to be looking at in the future. And unfortunately, it will take many more cases and many more deaths and, and a lot of time to figure that one out. But it is really important. Now, I understand you're a virologist, Connor, but you, I just want to talk to you about the fact that we now have a sizable chunk of the world's population living in lockdown. What signs will governments be looking for in order to start easing those restrictions? So we don't have a vaccine against the virus, we don't have any treatment, so just these public health measures such as lockdown are really all we have. And we know from looking and um, from what the WHO has said and looking at other countries who have contained this, um, lockdown and uh, combined with uh, testing and isolation and contact tracing, these are the only things we have to slow the spread of this. And we're constantly monitoring signs of the infections um, through testing um, and, and through monitoring of symptoms. So we, we kind of have a, a sense of how the outbreaks will be progressing in each country. And I guess what, what we, we will be looking for is that uh, they're reaching a peak and then a decrease in new cases or new symptoms, people who are getting sick in the coming months. And then once that might reach a, a a uh, small threshold, um, we'll begin to think about how we can relieve um, lockdown measures and for how long. Connor Bramford uh, from Queen's University in Belfast, uh, thank you.